In this video, I explain non-competitive enzymatic inhibition. Uh, I strongly recommend you to watch first the competitive inhibition video because uh, in this derivation, I'm going to be making references to that competitive inhibition. Okay, so uh, let's start with the reaction mechanism. Uh, what we have here is what happened for competitive inhibition. The only change in non-competitive is that the inhibitor can also bind to the enzyme substrate complex. Okay? And generate uh, an enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. Now, uh, the, the reason that the uh, inhibitor can do this is because if you think of, of a cartoon of the enzyme, the substrate and inhibitor, you have some sort of this picture, right? So, it turns out that the inhibitor binds to a different active site than the, than the substrate. So, it really doesn't matter uh, if the substrate is bound or not, the inhibitor can always bind to the second active site, right? right? So, uh, wherever there's an enzyme uh, in this mechanism, the inhibitor can bind to it. So you, here you have that that's free enzyme, the inhibitor can bind, that's the enzyme substrate complex, the inhibitor can bind. Now, something that would be, uh, that could be argued is whether uh, having substrate bound to the enzyme, okay, so having the substrate bound here, is going to affect or not whether the, uh, the binding constant for the inhibitor. Okay, so for the sake of generality, we're actually going to assume in this derivation that uh, the inhibitor uh, binding to this active site might be affected uh, by whether or not uh, the substrate is there. And what that means is that this uh, case by prime, uh, this case of i is going to be a slightly different value than this case of i. If it turns out that the binding is actually of this inhibitor is not affected by whether there's or no, or no substrate, these values would be exactly the same. But again, for the sake of generality, we're just going to consider that, they're, they're, that they are uh, different, um, and then we'll see what happens if they ever are the same. All right, so that KU prime is going to be equal to uh, concentration of uh, ES times concentration of I over concentration of ESI. All right, so that is your uh, reaction mechanism for non-competitive inhibition. Much as before, what we do is set up here the rate law by saying that the only uh, reaction that generates products is uh, ES reacting to rate constant K sub B uh, to give products. And much as we have done in competitive inhibition, the way that we're going to uh, find this uh, ES is by doing the mass balance of the enzyme. Okay? Uh, we will set up this expression and then try to solve it as a function of uh, uh, for ES, so that we, we actually get a, a, a functional form for ES there. Now, the mass balance of the enzyme is, as well, uh, a comparison of where the enzyme is at the start of the reaction and then after the reaction has started. At the start of the reaction, uh, you just have a concentration that's whatever you have in your experiment or in your body that is a fixed concentration. And then after the reaction has started, that enzyme can be uh, in many different places. You can have free enzyme, uh, that will be concentration of enzyme. Then you'll have enzyme bound to substrate, yes. And then you'll have the enzyme can be uh, sequestered here with the, the inhibitor, EI. And so far, this is actually not different from what we had for competitive inhibition. The difference here is that now uh, the enzyme can also be in, uh, uh, forming part of this ESI. That's the new term that appears in non-competitive inhibition, which is the most complicated of the three cases that we're going to study. All right, so the question is, well, how do we solve this, uh, this expression? Much as before, uh, we have to put all this as a function of the concentration of enzyme, uh, of ES, not enzyme, ES. Uh, what we're going to do for this is to use the, this the approximation for ES, which is exactly what we did for um, uh, competitive inhibition. For this, we would use K sub i, much as we have done for competitive inhibition. And then for this, we would use the expression for Ka prime, Ki prime. Okay, and that's the, uh, the new thing. All right, so uh, allow me to just uh, remove here the expressions for Ki and Ka prime. Uh, we'll re uh, recall them a little bit. Now, uh, I'm going to be skipping here some, some steps. I'm not just not going to do the entire derivation. Uh, what, we, what I will have to do here is now the steady state approximation, but it turns out that this is exactly the same of, of what we've done for competitive inhibition. Uh, the only difference would be as follows. Again, when you set up the steady state uh, equation for the concentration of uh, ES, you have to figure out what are the reactions that are uh, generating ES and then the rate of reactions that are removing ES. All right, so it turns out that, well, you're gonna have uh, the reactions that are generating ES are going to be that one, 
Uh, and the reactions that are removing the ES are going to be that one and that one. That's what happened for competitive inhibition. Now, in non-competitive, you actually also have two more. You have one reaction that generates ES, and that will be ESI falling to ES, and there's one reaction that removes ES from the solution. That will be ES reacting from uh, with I to generate ESI. Right, so in principle, the steady state reaction will have two more terms. One, this reaction that generates ES, and another one, that reaction that removes ES. But it turns out that we're actually going to take here an approximation and neglect all that. It turns out that if this equilibrium is found really fast, or is, is formed very fast, okay, what happens is that the rate of this process is going to be exactly the same as the rate of that process. What that means is that, well, this branch right here is actually not contribute to the steady state, again, because, well, the, the rate of one of the terms, that one, will be exactly the same as the rate of the other term, which will be that one, and again, overall, uh, they're just going to cancel each other out in the steady state uh, equ equation, and nothing is going to change. Okay, and again, you can take that approximation, which is a good one, if this equilibrium is formed really fast, much faster than uh, uh, the time that it takes for ES to reach the steady state. Well, under those approximations, it turns out that the concentration of enzyme is exactly the same as what we have had for uh, competitive in inhibition. Okay, that stuff. That is the concentration of enzyme. Concentration of EI, exactly the same as what we had for um, competitive inhibition. It doesn't change at all. So there's going to be Km, concentration of S, uh, concentration of ES, concentration of I, K sub I. Okay? So these two things have not changed at all. Now, uh, what we have to uh, reckon with is this ESI term, and that is new. Okay, so that uh, ESI term turns out that we're going to actually take it from the uh, dissociation constant of that complex, which is simply going to be the concentration of ES times the concentration of inhibitor over the concentration of ESI. All right, so this is going to allow us to uh, find here what the concentration of ESI is. Okay, so you're going to have here that ESI is going to be equal to, so if I solve this expression for ESI, that is going to be equal to the concentration of the enzyme subject complex times the concentration of inhibitor over Ki prime. Okay? All right, so proceeding this way, we actually have uh, something useful to finally solve for the mass balance uh, equation of the enzyme, right? That is a constant, then this term is going to be that one, which is the constant concentration of substrate and ES. You have ES. EI is this uh, expression, which also depends on ES, and then things that you want in the rate law. And then ESI, which has this expression, it also depends on ES, and that you want in the rate law, and this you will also want in the rate law. Okay, so, so the next step is just simply going to be plugging uh, each one of these terms where it, where it corresponds, and then try to uh, figure out if we can solve for ES. Okay, so the question is going to be a little, a little long, but you will see that uh, we're going to be able to factor things out pretty fast. Right, so uh, looking at that, we can write concentration of E times zero is going to be the concentration of uh, enzyme, which is Km concentration of ES over concentration of substrate plus concentration of ES plus concentration of EI, which is K sub M over concentration of substrate, concentration of ES, uh, concentration of inhibitor over uh, K sub I and then ESI, which is simply going to be, uh, ESI is going to be concentration of ES, concentration of I over K sub I prime. Okay? And again, notice that all of these terms depend on ES, so we're just going to be solving this expression for ES, so that at the end we can actually just get back here and find what the rate law is. All right, what I'm going to do here is um, uh, group terms together. So the first two that I'm going to uh, group together are going to be these two, and then uh, we will do those two. The way that I'm going to uh, factorize these two uh, terms is exactly the same as what we did for um, competitive inhibition. All right, so concentration of E times zero is just going to be equal to uh, concentration of ES times case, case of M over S, Okay, which is this term, and that is going to be a common factor of 1, all that term, plus i over k sub i. 
constant distance of inhibitor over case y. Okay, and much as what we have done before, that's simply something that we call alpha. Okay, right. so I have two terms uh, that I have factorized here. Let's take a look at the other two terms here. So I'm going to take now these two, and I'm going to take common factor of ES. All right, so that's going to be concentration of ES, common factor of, well, common factor is just going to be one, and uh, you have that this is going to be equal to that common factor is going to live here at the uh, concentration of I over case of prime. And notice that that is actually very similar to this, right? The only difference is that that dissociation constant is, is that for that particular step. Uh, so we, for simplicity, we can, we can actually say that this is equal to alpha prime. Okay, and again, that, that, is, that is going to make our expressions much easier to deal with. Okay, so uh, let's see what this turns into. Concentration of E naught is equal to concentration of ES, K sub M over concentration of S, alpha plus concentration of ES, alpha prime. Okay? And notice that now we can actually take a one factor of ES. And that is simply going to be equal to concentration of yes, common factor of k sub m over concentration of s alpha. And then the other common factor is plus alpha prime. Okay, great. Um, much as what we have done before, uh, we can now solve for the concentration of ES and then find that this is equal to the concentration of ES is equal to the concentration of E at time zero over K sub M concentration of S alpha plus alpha prime. Okay, and in, princi in principle, this is something that we can now take, plug in the rate law, and then see what the rate law looks like. Uh, but much as we have done uh, everywhere in competitive inhibition and in Michaelis Menten to start with, we can multiply everything by the concentration of substrate, uh, numerator and denominator, to uh, have this expression be a little bit more familiar. Okay, so this is going to be equal to concentration of E times zero times the concentration of substrate over K sub M alpha plus concentration of S alpha prime. Okay? Again, from going, and going to, from here to here, we simply have multiplied everything by the concentration of substrate. Anyway, so after all of these, uh, all of these few steps that we have right here, we just can uh, go back to the original rate law expression and then find out uh, what the rate law is going to be. All right, so our rate is going to be equal to K sub B times concentration of ES, which is all this. Concentration of E at time zero, concentration of substrate, K sub M alpha plus concentration of S alpha prime. Okay, recognizing that this is simply Vmax, we uh, come to an expression for the rate law, which is like this, K sub M alpha plus concentration of S alpha prime. And again, remember that this alpha is going to be equal to 1 plus concentration of I over K sub I. And then this alpha prime is 1 plus concentration of I over K sub I prime. Again, we've uh, been assuming that this K and K prime are different for the sake of generality, but actually in, in all of the problems that we're going to do, it turns out that we're going to consider that they are the same. If that is the case, then this alpha is identical to this alpha prime, and then uh, this is for us to solve. Much as we have done before, notice that if the concentration of uh, inhibitor is zero, then this alpha happens to be one, this alpha prime happens to be one, and then you recover the expression for uh, regular Nicholas and Menten uninhibited, the rate law. But as long as soon as this concentration of I start to be larger than zero, 
what happens is these alpha numbers are going to be larger than 1. And that means that the denominator is larger than what it was before, and the rate goes down, which is, again, something that explains how inhibition takes place. Okay, so this is the derivation for the rate law for non-competitive inhibition.